Okay, so on this problem, I actually didn't solve it during the test because I'm not like elite status. I'm, you know, decent, but I didn't have time to get to it, okay? So I solved it after the test and I kind of did it flippantly. I wasn't really focused and I allowed my, my guard to come down and I actually made a small error in my reasoning. And I'm gonna share with you how you could have avoided that error in your reasoning. I'm also gonna be developing the thought process, like what it is I did to even understand what this is saying, going from that moment of what to what, and then progressing and just getting there and eventually finding the correct solution and the best way to explain it. Let's get started. This is the fall 2021 AMC 10A. It was problem 23. It was also the 12A, problem 20. All right, for each positive integer N, let F sub one of N be twice twice the number of positive integer divisors of n. Okay, we've, that's okay, we can handle that. And for j greater than or equal to two, wait, where did the j, why? Okay, I guess keep going. Let f sub j of n equal f sub one of f sub j minus one of n. What, 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 what are they? Okay, well, we're just gonna press on. For how many values of n less than or equal to 50 is f sub 50 of n equal to 12? Okay, so at that moment, you gotta give it up. You gotta stop, but let the panic go. You need to just take some steps. Okay, so let's just make it really simple. It says j is greater than or equal to two, then pick two. Let's say if j is two, what happens? Well, what about n? Let's pick n to be something simple too. What do we want? each positive integer n. You usually in this process, when you're kind of panicking, trying to get over that point, pick simple values. It will give you confidence to press forward to more complicated conclusions, and you'll be surprised which ones you can make. So I'm gonna pick the smallest positive integer n, one. So now I've got f sub one of one. Let's just do that. I don't know whether the j is gonna come in yet. Don't think about the j, we picked it, but don't think about it. Just go here and do what it says. All right, f sub one of one. This is twice the number of positive integer divisors of one. Just replace the n with one now, because now it's one. And that's going to be, well, there's one divisor of one, so it's two. Okay, great, now what? For j greater than or equal to two, we got that. Let f sub two, f sub two of n, now keep in mind, n is still one, okay? So f sub two of one is equal to f sub one of f sub one of one. Oh wait, f sub one is that thing where we do twice the number of divisors, and I know what this is, it's right here, it's two, so I want f sub one of two, which means I want twice the number of divisors that two has, and it has two divisors, that's why it's prime, and you're going to have a two and one only, so then double that to get four, we want twice that. Okay, so there's something happening, it was kinda, let's just keep going. We still don't know what we're doing really yet, we don't know how we're gonna get to the end, don't look that far ahead. In big, long problems that are like a lot to think about, you just keep taking steps. And that's what we're gonna do. So you get to f sub three of one. What would this equal? Now j is three, it's equal to f sub one of f sub two of one. Hey, we've, we've got that right here. f sub two of one is four. So it's like having f sub one of four and four has one, two, and four. That's three divisors. We double it to get six. Okay, all right, f sub four of one. Again, we're not seeing anything yet. Maybe we're just adding two every time, right? Maybe, well, let's just see what happens. f sub four of one equals f sub one of f sub three of one, and f sub three of one is six. What are the divisors of six? One, two, three, and six. There's four divisors. We want twice that number, we want eight. It's right about now that your speed of calculating this should start to increase. Okay, because you've kind of laid the track down. Just travel on it now, right? So then now what? We've got f sub five of one. What's this going to equal? It's going to equal f sub one of, I'm just gonna put the eight here, right? I'm not gonna write that. We can just avoid writing it. So f sub five of one is f sub one of eight. Eight has one, two, four, and eight. It has four divisors and it gives eight. Oh, so wait a minute. If it's gonna, it's just, it's gonna, it's gonna always be eight. Well, in that case, none of these numbers are going to work. One, two, four, and eight, we got rid of some, but what's going on here then? How are we going to generate 12 with some number? It looks like at some point, I got curious at this point, and I said, 
what if we said f sub something of 12? What would that equal? Well, that would be, uh, I would have to find the divisors of 12. They're 12 and 1. And now there's the prime method of doing it, right? 2 squared times 3. I'm just doing it this way because, I don't know, why? Uh, 3 and 4. Whatever, 4 and 3, switch it. So there's 6 divisors. Let's see, 6 divisors doubled is 12. This is going to do what that did. And that means I need to be able to create uh, something that will produce 12 uh, or 6 divisors. I want 6 divisors so that I can double it to get 12, and I get 12 and 12 and 12 and 12 repeatedly and endlessly. So now we know what to do. If you don't, well, you should know. You're doing 23 on an AMC 10 or 20. You should be beyond the point of knowing what we're doing here. For those of you who are new to the test and haven't seen this kind of stuff, okay, that's fine. But for the experienced people, this should be, you should be able to pause the video right now and finish this problem. Okay, so maybe you should do that. Maybe you should pause it right now. See if you can finish it. You got the groundwork laid, finish it. Unless you got it on the test and then you're awesome. Okay, so uh, let's see then. I need to get, I have a number of divisors equal to six. That is based on the prime factorization. For example, p to the fifth, if it's as a prime, will have six divisors because it has one and then p to the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. I need a prime number to go in p. The only one less than 50 that will work is two. So I get the first number that's going to work, 32. Okay, that's the only case with p to the fifth. Is there any other way to get six divisors? Sure, you can multiply three times two. That would mean I need p squared times q to the first, where p and q are both primes. If you don't know what you do, you add one to the exponents and you multiply those numbers. Three times two is six. That would give me six divisors, doubles to 12, and we're on the track to getting 12 forever and ever and ever until we get to here and win a prize. Okay, so then what? Let's just start plugging primes into p and q. I'm gonna start, you always start with extremes. Don't randomly throw primes in there. You need to work up, build up a systematic process so you can be efficient with your time. Okay, so two squared. I've got two squared times three to the first. Okay, that's gonna be no problem. That's gonna be 12 itself. Uh, two squared times five. Keep this one the same and start changing that one. Five times four is 20. Uh, two squared times seven, 28. Uh, two squared times 11, 44. Okay, so then we got all the ones with two squared. You're not gonna get 13 in there. It goes over, it gets 52. So we're gonna need to go three squared now. So let's go three squared times two. That's fine, that's 18. Okay. How about three squared times five? Nine times five is 45, we're still good. Okay, and then you can't do seven because seven times nine is too big. How about five squared times two? You better check it. Don't assume that five squared can't work. Check it, just make sure you've done all this work. If you don't bother to plug in five here and you get it wrong, man, I would hide my face from the world for a while. <laughs> no, it's okay, everybody makes mistakes sometimes, but let's work through it. Five squared times two is 50. Okay, so you got 50 here. Now, what can we do next? Because we've got how many right now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna erase this concept here so I can look at it. All right, we've got eight right now. That is one of the answers. That was the answer that I originally thought was going to be correct. And I wasn't really, like I said, I wasn't checking myself. I wasn't thinking, are you sure? Because I wasn't in test taking mode. I was just trying to solve a problem. And so what I should have done though is asked myself, but wait, is there any other way that we could generate one of these numbers? See, if we could generate one of these numbers as well, like let's say we had a situation where you had F sum something of 18. What would we get? Well, 18 would have, you'd have, you know what it is, it's right here. Three squared times two, it would have six divisors. You would double it and get 12. But what if there was something like the term before it that gave uh, f sub j minus one of whatever that gave 18. Well, in order for that to happen, I would need to have nine divisors, which would mean I would need to be of the form p squared times q squared. That gives three times three. And wouldn't you know it, there's another one. 36, we're getting up there. We got 36. Are there any others? Three, uh, two squared times five squared, way too big. Uh, it's, that's 100 already. So we gotta check the other ones though. 18's been exhausted. Any other way to get 18? Six times three, that would be two to the fifth times something squared, way too big, right? So then what I'm gonna do then is cut all of these in half. 
and then think about what they are and if they could work. So I'm gonna have 16. Is there any way to get 16 divisors? Even if I had four divisors times four divisors, um, like four times four, I would have to have like P cubed Q cubed, and that would be, you know, uh, eight times 27, way too big. So I think this one's out. Uh, we already did the 12s. These are the 12s, everything on this row and then the 50. So then the 20 cut in half is 10. How could I get 10? I could get it from five times two, which means I would want P to the fourth times Q to the first. Now, if this was a two, 16 times, the, pick the smallest thing possible, three. Why can't it be a two? Because we did that one. We did two to the fifth. Okay, so then uh, you've got two to the fourth, 16 times three, you get another one, 48, but this 11 is kind of sitting there like, huh, are you sure it's not 11, right? So we gotta kinda keep checking to make sure that we don't get something wrong here, unless of course you're running out of time on the test, you might have to just pick one. But uh, for now, we're gonna go ahead and continue. Um, can I put anything else in here like three to the fourth? No, way too big. So we've exhausted this one, this one, this one, and this one. 28 would need 14 divisors. I'd need seven times two. Two to the sixth is too big by itself. Um, yeah, 14 is, I'm gonna get 14, I think. So that's done. 22 divisors, get out. Uh, nine, uh, what we, what, 45, you can't even cut 45 in half to double to it. Uh, 50 could be cut in half to 25 divisors. That's not gonna work. 36 would give 18 uh, divisors, and we already did that one. We know how to get the, actually no, 18 divisors we didn't do. That's it, we're, we're, we're done. We're definitely through it all. But look at all the little trap answers just waiting for people who are running out of time on the test. And this is why it's so important that that one through five, six through 10, that you're getting through pretty quickly. So that when you get to a problem like this, you're not panicking and selecting an answer like eight because it feels like you thought of, oh, I'm so good. I thought about, I knew this, I'm so smart. We do that to ourselves. That's right, you are probably all of you very smart if you're participating in this contest. But they love to get you like that. So make sure when you're approaching these questions, you take the time and you have to kind of have a doubt but not too much doubt. It's like a, an experience thing you have to have where you determine, hey, maybe I should be second guessing. Is there any other way? Am I sure that there's not more than eight? Because if you didn't, I bet this was the number one trap answer. I'm just guessing though. Um, that's gonna be it. Let's get another problem going and I'll see you in a few.